second as soon as you I know. Open Good morning, everybody. We have a full audience. It's always nice to see folks in the chairs. We're not just talking to windows. Uh, we are here for the Marion County Board of Commissioners board session. It's Wednesday, April 20th. It's 9 a.m. And we're here in the Senator hearing room at 555 Court Street Northeast in Salem. And if you would, please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So we're going to start with public comment. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little bit of a frog in my throat this morning. And it looks like we have one or two citizens, depending if they come up one at a time. A Dave and Pam Lindley. Are you in the audience? It, you can come up together, and if you'd like to come over here to this microphone. Do we sit? Please sit. Join us. <laughs> and once you're comfortable, please, for the record, uh, give us your first and last name and your city of residence. Um, my name is Dave Lindley, and we live... Uh, in Salem, well, the unincorporated area, and we're relatively new residents for the community, and we're very pleased to be here. And for our neighborhood, the reason that I wanted to come up is number one, to um, thank the commissioners for the efforts that, to help us with our neighborhood near the uh, intersection of Silverton. Road and 47th Avenue, we've been on 47th Street. We've been having uh, a big issue with uh, homeless vehicles and a lot of trash build up there. It's been quite unsightly. And uh, we address, sent an uh, email to the commissioners asking for their help and support. And you know, things happen. Uh, and the, uh, the vehicles in question have been moved. There's still uh, a lot of trash on the street, shopping carts and all the stuff that they've, they've assembled that it was left there. And I'm not sure what the next step is, is who's responsible for a public roadway to, to finish clearing out what was gone. So that, again, I'm just overwhelmed with the, the response and, and full of gratitude. The unfortunate thing is that we just drove by there this morning, and now there's another RV sitting in the exact same spot that has been came from somewhere else because there's new numerous tags on it that they've ripped off where they were tagged someplace else and so it's almost like whack-a-mole yeah and um so i know that it's it's not just our neighborhood it's everywhere but being new residents we, uh we'd like to know what we can do and, and what is can be done as a community to address the issue uh that's the first thing and then i guess in a uh, along with that is the fact that um we are seeing uh, a a big rise in the amount of graffiti on neighborhood fences in our neighborhood as well. So it would appear to me as a novice that there's an increase in gang activity and homeowners are you know, faced with the, the mandates of, uh, they, they're responsible, I guess, for removing the graffiti and, and what can be done between the resources of the county and the neighborhood to work together as a team to address this because obviously we, <clears throat> we don't want to live in a blighted neighborhood and so it takes a community and thank you very much. Well, thank you for being here. Typically we just listen, but I want, I want to validate the fact that you sent us an email, Pam did, on the 17th. And yesterday um, I received, I forwarded that email to our sheriff and our undersheriff they're in charge of code enforcement, and they assured me that they had already uh, marked this location for a task force. And as you stated, um, they've already removed two of the vehicles, uh, including the school bus, which happened yesterday morning. And code enforcement's gonna be working with our public works team. Brian May is an audience nodding his head. Uh, he's in charge of environmental services, and they'll be over to clean up the garbage. So um, your taxpayer dollars are hard at work. And we work really hard and as fast as we can in Marion County to tend to the issues once they're brought to our attention. But they aren't always brought to our attention. So one of the things that you can do to address the issue, and all citizens can, is to contact non-emergency and file a report for just about anything that you think is illegal or um, uncomfortable in your neighborhood. Because we have to have a report of it. 
um, in order for us to assign a team to that, regardless of whether it's law enforcement or public works or um, the health department, because we have various teams across the county that respond into the community for different circumstances. Commissioner? Yeah, Madam Chair, thank you for your email. Um, I know both commissioners responded. I didn't respond because you'd gotten contacted. <laughs> I knew they had forwarded it. So, uh, but the non-emergency number, if you want to take this down, uh, for our sheriff's office is 503-588-5032. And that would be a number where you would call and they would dispatch code enforcement, et cetera, and a follow-up on those reports. That's but okay. If you are in an emergency, always do the 911. Of course. But, yeah. But it is important, Commissioner, that, um, that you, re reported. you report every little thing that um, makes you feel unsafe. Because a lot of times, the way, you know, we have limited resources, the sheriff's office has limited resources. And so if stuff's happening but it's not getting reported, then as far as the sheriff's department it knows, nothing's happening in that area. And so it's really important. Sometimes, even in my neighborhood and state number we had a situation and I was like well it's not that big of a deal other people you know I don't want to bug the sheriff's office and, and what I learned is like no that's not that's not helpful actually it's helpful even if you don't feel like they're gonna murder you or you know that it's still really important if it's graffiti or whatever it is that you make the reports um, this is true not just for you because you you obviously did you said hey we've got to tell somebody about this but for everybody in the community to know that it's really important that you make those reports even if it's not an emergency very good. Well, and we belong to the Hayesville Neighborhood uh, Association, which has meetings on the fourth Thursday uh, of each month, and the um, county, de the sheriff's department, and uh, emergency services folks have are always in attendance and, and share information there. But certainly, would love to have other representatives from the county that might be there just to lend credence to their efforts because. The little bit that I've noticed on the Nextdoor app is there's a great deal of misinformation that's shared between neighbors, which really isn't helpful for the, what we're all trying to accomplish. <laughs> and so I would just welcome uh, the voice of reason and, and to can cut through that so that we can be much more productive in our efforts. So the commissioners and public works recently attended one of those meetings a few months ago to talk about roads because we were having some challenges with speeding and other things over there. Uh, and we, we speak with Nicole Tarter as often as we can. Okay. Uh, she's a personal friend of mine, so I'm on speed dial. Um, and I think your group over there is really great. And I know that our sheriff's team and our public works occasionally pops in. But if there's a particular topic of interest, you can always email us, like Pam did, and we'll come out. Uh, but I would, as much as I'd love to be there for every meeting, <laughs> it's Thank possible. you so much. Yeah. Thank you for being here, Thank and you. hopefully you'll get your yeah, I, I'd like to just, sure. does this work? It does, yeah, oh, okay. if you could scoot forward and then just provide oh. us your name as well. Uh, yes, I'm Pam Lindley, and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, just to get a little clarification in regards to the graffiti, my understanding is that the homeowner is responsible for moving the graffiti here in the, in the county versus in the city of Salem proper. They do have a task force team that helps to remove the graffiti. And I wanted to understand why the, the same resource isn't available. We have a neighbor down the street that just moved here uh, from Woodburn, and um, she has her own home. Beautiful fence. It's plastic, or I don't know what you call the material. Vinyl. Okay, it's vinyl. Beautiful fence that's been graffitied over, and within a couple days, she got a notice that she had four days to remove it herself. Single woman in this home, and now she's held accountable for other people's actions and um, I don't quite understand why such a burden is put on her of something that occurs outside of her control and what can be done through the county. I mean she was already freaking out about having her fence damaged this way but then to get a notice from a code enforcement that the, she's responsible for removing it and I don't know what consequences she would face if she couldn't get the job done but uh, removing it is not as simple as just painting over a wooden fence so any thoughts on that or is this something this sounds that like something we have to talk to the code enforcement about and get back to you on and we, we haven't had a meeting about that if that's what you're asking so yeah well we, it just we, came we, to my attention because I read yeah. the next door and learn about this and we saw the house before we we saw that we saw the damage 
before we saw it up here on there and thought, yeah, that's, that's, it's a problem. It's a real problem. And, uh, you know, why, why is there not some other means besides saying, okay, it's your home, it's your responsibility, even though you didn't put it on there and you have to get it done and you need to get it done right away. Yeah, I don't know the history of that, like the commissioner said, and we'll reach out. The sheriff always watches these meetings, even though he's not in attendance today, so I'm sure that he's typing an email at this moment telling us exactly how the KVD program works um, and how code enforcement handles that and what the ordinance is. And once we gather that information, we can provide it to you. Is it possible this information can be shared on Nextdoor? Is there someone that... You can share it on Nextdoor. Well, uh, you know, you have to be a member of that. You know, if I was to be on every Nextdoor, I'd be on like 85 of them across <laughs> Marion County because every community has one. And so when we provide you the information, you're welcome to post it along with contact information for your community to share, or you can have your neighborhood association do that. Uh, the county is different than the city. It's much larger. Um, we have a much larger geographic area to cover, and um, Marion County traditionally likes to be conservative in the way we tax. And so we have to spread the dollars as far as we can on programs. And so I, I'm going to go on a limb here and say that likely we don't have the same program as Salem because we don't, um, we have different priorities. And while we want to partner with our citizens, and I'm sure there's something that we can do to support her and others that would need help with that, I can't speak directly to it right now. But any information that comes out um, from the Board of Commissioner's Office or a public entity can be shared on all of those social media resources. But it would have to be from the citizen's approach because we don't have um, the bandwidth to chase them all personally. But we'll provide you the access to do so. Okay, thank you. I think the Great. Sheriff's Office can post something. They can right. post on theirs, but they, don't, right. they also don't have access into every right. next door system. Mm -hmm. And we do have a Marion County Sheriff's Office page along with the Public Works page and the Commissioner's kind of a Marion County General Facebook page um, to where we put information out. And we would definitely share it there for it to be kind of uh, spread throughout. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thanks for so coming. So good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sherry, good morning. We're going to move on to presentations. And we have one for the 2021 Volunteer Annual Report. And Sherry Littner is going to join us. And I have guests. Great. With me, so I'll just have them come up and... Looks like you... Is it... We have three, Rob yes. Mill, Ray Wilson, and Andrew Freeman. So two over there and one over here. Come over here, and then if you gentlemen want to join there. Good morning. should have a mask to talk through this time. Uh, so true. Well, good morning, Chair Bethel, Commissioners. I am Sherry Littner, Volunteer Service Coordinator for uh, Marion County, and I am part of the Human Resources team here at Marion County. Um, I have three guests with me today, so I have Andrew Freeman. Andrew is an intern with our Victim Assistance Program, and uh, so I'm going to have all of them join a little later in the presentation, if you're good with that. And then I have Ray Wilson, who sits on our local alcohol and drug planning committee. And then I have Rob Mill, who is a, a volunteer with our emergency management. And he is from Woodburn, so his activities take place up in the Woodburn area. And again, you'll be hearing more from them a little later in the presentation. And uh, the reason we're here today is we are celebrating National Volunteer Week. And while we do strive to recognize our volunteers really every day, National Volunteer Week just provides us kind of a unique opportunity to recognize and celebrate how our volunteers really uh, come alongside Marion County and contribute to the uh, health and wellness of the county. I am always so thrilled to be here to present the annual report, and I'm really proud to present the 2021 annual report. Um, you each have a copy of the report. There are some hard copies over on the table, and then also folks can find a printable version on our county website. 
The annual report is put together each year and it really is a summary, but it does reflect on the time, energy, and contributions of our volunteers. And as we have seen over the last couple of years, our volunteers are just incredibly resilient and very dedicated and committed to the community. Um, I also want to clarify that I am really here representing an entire team of county employees, and there's actually quite a few in the room today. But there are 40 plus county employees that work directly, uh, either managing or working directly with the volunteers. And so I know that we've got some folks here from victim assistance. You already pointed out Brian. We've got a group from um, Public Works Environmental Services. And so these are the folks that are day in, day out uh, working with the volunteers. So on behalf of all the volunteers and those that work with them, I'm going to share just some highlights from the annual report today. And I'd like to just start with the numbers. So, uh, so uh, just to clarify, so this annual report is reporting on volunteer activities from January 1st to December 31st, 2021. So in 2021, Marion County had over 1,300 volunteers, and together those individuals donated 62,665 hours of service. Some things in life are pretty hard to put a value on, um, love, dedication, selfishness, selflessness. And um, our volunteers embody these attributes and they really are invaluable to us, but we also do actually try to put a dollar value on our volunteers. And we do that, it is a way, one way that we can demonstrate the economic value of hosting volunteers. So we use a rate that is published annually from an organization called the Independent Sector. And the published rate for 2021 was $28.54 for each hour. And so if we use that and we calculate the time that our volunteers donated in 2021, the value of that is well over $1.7 million. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are a variety of ways that volunteers work with us here at the county. And uh, so I wanted to just kind of break that down into buckets a little bit. Out of the 1,300 plus volunteers in 2021, 22 were interns, practicum students, or AmeriCorps members. 184 sat on an advisory board committee or commission and 1,097 were what I'm going to term today as program volunteers. And so what I thought I'd do today is just kind of talk about those buckets. And so I'm going to start today talking about our interns. Um, interns, practicum students, and AmeriCorps members actually serve throughout the county. Um, and just as an example, I wanted to tell a couple of stories that kind of help reflect on just how much they contribute to our work. So in behavioral health, Adrian donated 500 hours to the Zero Suicide Program. And she uh, assisted in planning for the Zero Suicide Day. She co-facilitated co-facilitated QPR trainings and completed mental health assessments for clients that were being served. And with Adrian's help, 137 county employees have received the QPR training. And that is an evidence-based training that reduces suicide, suicidal behavior by uh, teaching folks how to question, persuade, and then refer individuals who may be suicidal or in crisis. And uh, Adrian played a, a, a really active role in that and she co-facilitated. And although her time may wrap up as an intern, the work that she has put in is gonna continue. And those trainings continue to roll out to county employees as well as to organizations in the community. 
And then another uh, practicum student that we had was Presley. And Presley completed her practicum requirements assisting our juvenile detention staff. Presley helped youth to build their cognitive skills, develop healthy attitudes, and better understand how their thinking impacts their behavior. Presley donated 400 hours in all while she was able to build her own skills and prepare for a career in the criminal justice system. And then uh, today, I wanted to just uh, talk a little bit about victim assistance. So victim assistance is a division of the district attorney's office, and they also regularly partner with students to help them fulfill their academic goals. So I'm super excited to have actually somebody with us today. So Andrew Freeman is an intern with Victim Assistance. And I've invited Andrew and asked him just to share a little bit about himself as well as his time with uh, the program. Andrew. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> thank you, Sherry. Um, good morning, uh, Board of Commission. My name is Andrew Freeman. Um, I am a fifth year undergraduate student down at Western Oregon University. Um, I am currently majoring in both criminal justice and psychology with a minor in forensic psychology. Um, is that kind of the background? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dan, and then do you want to share a little bit about how did you get connected with the program? Right. So I actually got in touch with one of my professors. Uh, her name is Dr. Powell. She uh, frequently partners with victim assistance, and so I got in contact with her, and she told me about this experience. Uh, and I uh, soon got in contact with somebody from victim assistance, um, one of the case managers, and they told me about this opportunity, and so I um, applied, and uh, here I am today. Excellent. And then do you have any, um, if you want to just reflect a little bit about what, what is, the, why is this a meaningful use of your time? Right, so um, this is a very meaningful use of my time because um, as a student in criminal justice and psychology, I have gained the opportunity to get a, get a better insight in the judicial system that I normally wouldn't have prior to this experience. Um, I've also been able to help and assist people who have been uh, victims of crime in the uh, county of Marion uh, and help them through the criminal justice process and help kind of understand their situation. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks. Excellent. Okay, well, um, so that's yeah. question. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Manager. Oh, pardon uh, me. Just can, can we uh, have an interview right now? You ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Are you ready? When do you graduate? Yeah, yeah. when do you graduate and what oh. do you plan to do, Andrew? Oh, right. Um, I didn't mention that. My, my apologies. Uh, I actually expect to graduate uh, this June, so June of 2022. And what do what you... What are your goals? What, do you, what would you like to do? Um, as of right now, I am looking into a lot of uh, different possibilities. So one is uh, whether with victim assistance, I've also looked into wanting to be an investigator. Um, I'm kind of all up in the air right now. I have thought about being a lawyer, going to law school. So I don't. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. You might end up. You might end up, might end up being a commissioner. <laughs> yeah. gotcha. Or the district okay. attorney. She's a lawyer. Well, <laughs> congratulations on your uh, education, and um, you know, look forward to seeing you hopefully somewhere in Marion County. We need good so much. people like you. Thank you. I'm just curious, though. Have you had a chance to follow any of our judges or the DA around? Uh, I have not. No. There's, I was like, it sounds like we're at Disneyland all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cool. I think you should do that, and if you need help, reach out to the board's office, and we can connect you to a scheduler to make that happen. I think. What you're doing is extremely valuable uh, for our community and for the victims that happen to go through the criminal justice system. But to see it from the perspective of the folks that are making the decisions for the, the criminals um, is different. And I think it's a valuable um, opportunity that it's out there for folks. And you sound like you're really motivated to be in some form of public safety. And so having that insight early on might help you guide uh, your next steps. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I, I just really think it's been a great opportunity to kind of understand everything more um, in person. Um, whereas, like, learning something is different, but being able to kind of experience it in person is definitely 
eye-opening experience. I would concur, 100%. You, you may want to visit our Public Safety Coordinating Council meeting someday because there's all different um, uh, disciplines around that table, uh, er, everywhere from uh, victims assistant uh, organizations to the sheriff uh, and uh, district attorneys, uh, defense attorneys, uh, and uh, make some connections there. And you can get that up on our website But uh, when that is. But public safety coordinating council meetings are a good spot to get a good view of the overall system that we, we work on with our partners here. Right behind you is a lieutenant and a commander who kind of perked up. So she's going to follow you out. She's, she's going to stop you right hand. out the door and connect you. Uh, we know. She's amazing. We're recruiting right now. We're yeah. talking to you. Yeah. Hear it? This, you know, is an interview, really. So you're surrounded. You can put us all down as a reference if you want going forward. I was just going to say thank you for the interview. So. Yeah. Well, this is what it's like in Marion County. <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you. Okay, Sherry. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, and then the next group that I want to just share a little bit about are our advisory boards. So um, we are very grateful for these uh, really committed volunteers. Uh, when you sign up to be an advisory board member at Marion County, you're committing to uh, usually a three to four year term. And what I've seen in the last couple of years that I've been in this position is that uh, these are volunteers that come back, they serve multiple terms, um, and uh, we appreciate that because there's a lot of value in the continuity and that historical knowledge that they bring to the table. And we actually have, I think there's a couple of Solid Waste Management Advisory Committee members that are going to get reappointed later today, so that's a great example of that commitment that I'm talking about. In total, in 2021, we had 184 individuals that served in this capacity. And just quickly to review, so there are about 20 boards uh, here at Marion County. So in, when I say boards, I mean that generally. It could be an advisory board, a committee, or a commission. Uh, they serve in... Uh, the board's office, uh, the clerk's office, the finance department, human resources, and even community services. And uh, we have volunteers that serve on boards in our health and human services department, public works, and the sheriff's office. Advisory board volunteers really bring a variety of expertise, uh, experience, and perspectives, and then they share that as they uh, do the work depending on the board that they're on, but they are studying issues, they're making recommendations, oftentimes they're making recommendations to you, and they really help shape how we serve the community. And we're fortunate, again, because we have an advisory board that uh, agreed to join us this morning. So Ray Wilson is with us today, and Ray has served on the local alcohol and drug planning co uh, committee, if my records are correct, since 2007. So he really brings a wealth of knowledge, and he is currently serving as the chair of that group. And so I invited Ray to join us today to share just a little bit about um, what, what, what he keeps him motivated and why he continues to serve in this capacity. And then I asked him if he had one he wanted to share, kind of a memorable uh, accomplishment that uh, has happened in his tenure on the Local Alcohol and Drug Planning Committee. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Ray Wilson. Thank you, Sherry. <clears throat> Good morning, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner Cameron, Commissioner Willis. Uh, I serve on the Marion County Alcohol and Drug Planning Committee and have for a number of years. Uh, my own personal motivation, it's a way to give back. I worked for Marion County for a number of years, and uh, it was a way for me to continue to give back to the community. As a recovering person, it's really important to me to be able to uh, do that kind of service. Uh, I represent a whole bunch of representatives and volunteers who have spent many countless hours in uh, providing services to help the mission of Marion County and to help our, our community. A couple of things we have accomplished over the years. We do something big about every eight or nine years. I mean, it's just interesting. But in, back in two thir uh, 
April of uh, 2013, we had what we call a silver tsunami, and it was a conference uh, for the uh, seniors and alcohol and drug issues, which was well attended, and we did that well. And uh, Commissioner Willis also did a presentation for us in uh, September of 19, where we did the opiates and pregnancy uh, with uh, conjunction with the Salem Hospital, which was really well attended and so much necessary. Uh, also, I want to uh, say that uh, I appreciate the support we get from the health department and serving them as without their help, we wouldn't be able to accomplish our mission. And currently, what we're working on is <clears throat> to explore services, how to uh, bring more services uh, in Marion County to our impaired youth. So that's currently what we're working on. So that's a little bit from me. Thank you for being here. Thank you. For doing those great things. If I may ask, because I'm new here, what did you do for Marion County when you were an employee here? I worked with the uh, alcohol drug program for okay. a number of years. That's great. Well, thanks for continuing that path and leading activities to help those in our community still. Thank you. There's a really solid community among kind of folks who are in recovery and are helping folks in recovery and work for Marion County now <laughs> or used to work for Marion County and are still volunteering for Marion County yeah. and that that community is really tight mm -hmm. and I, th I think it's a something that most citizens I mean before I became a commissioner I didn't know it existed and um, you guys are very humble about your work but it's very important work you know it's something that if uh, if you all didn't do what you did, our community would be a much worse place. So thank you for sticking with it, you know, and for having a heart for, for other folks that are struggling with addiction in our community. Thank you. Kind of been a second career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you, Ray. So we talked a little bit about the interns. We talked a little bit about advisory board members. And um, so next, I just want to kind of review some of our program volunteers. And so that is probably the biggest bucket. We have about 1,097 individuals that uh, volunteer for what I term a program. And so I'm just gonna highlight a few of those today. And uh, I'm gonna start with the Marion County Fair. And um, part of the reason I wanted to share about the fair, because the 2021 fair was kind of extraordinary. And there is a small group of individuals that um, make up our fair board. And so we have seven fair board members and then five key volunteers. And those are volunteers that actually sit on the board. And that is because it is a working board and they need that many people to put together the fair. In 2021, uh, Things were just all over the place. I think what I heard is that the fair board had nine plans because as the things changed and things reverted and then went back with everything going on with the pandemic, and it was about six weeks before the fair that the fair board actually found out that the fair was going forward as a face-to-face -face, uh, event. And so they put their advanced planning and organization skills to work to make that happen. And then in, additional, uh, in addition to the fair board, the fair also uses what uh, we call superintendents. And those are volunteers that help run the open class competitions, those competitions um, or exhibits that uh, community members can be involved with. And then we had over 100 event volunteers. So those were the volunteers that came and worked during the fair, either helping us at the will call booth or just greeting visitors and helping ask questions, things of that nature. And I just wanted to report on a few of the numbers with the fair because it was extraordinary. So normally we have a four day fair and I think our attendance is maybe 23,000, 24,000, somewhere in that ballpark over the course of those four days. And in 2021, we had 36,500 visitors walk through the doors for a three day fair. So as you can imagine, the, the planning, the logistics that go into that e event are immense and we rely so heavily on volunteers to make that possible. And the other thing that the fair makes possible are um, 
opportunities for youth. So in 2021, uh, the fair had, I'm going to give you some numbers and I want to get them right because it's, I think it's really pretty impressive. So there were 1,583 4-H FFA or open class exhibit opportunities for our youth. There were 339 open class exhibit opportunities for adults in the community, and then we had 45 vendor exhibits and 60 educational displays at the fair, and uh, none of this would be possible without our fair volunteers. So that's a little bit about the fair. And then the next program I want to just touch on is emergency management. I could honestly spend my entire presentation talking about emergency management volunteers, their dedication, and really truly how fortunate we are that they bring their time and energy uh, to partner with us. So uh, instead of that, I'm going to do one better because I brought another guest, which is Rob Mill. And Rob, as I mentioned, is a volunteer in the Woodburn area, but Rob is uh, I'm sure there's much more, but what I know of, so Rob is on the Woodburn CERT team, the Community Emergency Response Team. He's involved with the Woodburn Firefighter, Firefighter Rehabilitation Team, which comes alongside the firefighters when they're on active duty to provide key support that uh, literally can keep them alive. And he is also a member of the Medical Reserve Corp. So I'm going to let Rob share a little bit about the work in Woodburn. But before I do that, I'm going to brag a little bit on Rob. Because as I was preparing this presentation, I went in and looked. And when I look in the volunteer files for our emergency, manage, or emergency management volunteers, I might see that they have three to five sometimes six certifications that they bring to the table, expertise that they bring with us. And I looked in Rob's file, and I counted 19. <laughs> and uh, it is just one of the ways I can demonstrate uh, just really what our volunteers bring to the table. And it's something that, you know, we just really, we, we probably couldn't even employ enough people to bring that kind of expertise and energy. And um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rob, and he's going to share just a little bit about um, their work in Woodburn. Good morning, Commissioners, Madam Commissioner. Uh, yes, thank you, Sherry. I didn't know it was that many, actually. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I had to keep counting because I was thinking it can't be right. Um, we were asked to comment a little bit about ourselves first. Um, I came from uh, essentially a lifetime of public service in, in various disciplines. Uh, when I finally retired, it was, hmm, what do I do now? Uh, I was thought, well, I heard about this thing called Cascadia. I think I'll work on coming up with some kind of a family plan. And as I went through the family plan, I ran across this thing called CERT. Oh, boy, that looks interesting. Little did I know. Anyway, uh, four years, four years later, five years later, somewhere in there, um, I joined the CERT team. Uh, I became an instructor uh, by virtue of being affiliated with the CERT team. I was afforded the opportunity to get the training to become an emergency medical responder. So I definitely took advantage of that and presently a team leader as well as instructor. Um, I'd like to talk about our, our Woodburn CERT program uh, a little bit, and that is uh, Currently about 50 or so active volunteers. Uh, our main goal is emergency preparedness. Uh, FEMA calls us a force multiplier for uh, emergency services. As we know, when any kind of a disaster happens, i.e. Cascadia or something along those lines, uh, emergency services will be quickly overwhelmed, and that's where we come in and kind of take on the more mundane background roles to free up the first responders for what they need to do and what they're trained to do. Uh, we are trained in uh, first aid, light search and rescue, um, organization, uh, the basic course covers uh, a myriad of, of topics and I won't bore you with all of those. Uh, 
What I'd like to uh, talk to you about today is what we did in 2020 that transi transitioned into 2021 as well. And that is through the school district providing a list of families in need to the food bank. Uh, we partnered with the food bank. And in space of 39 weeks, starting in 2020 and running through February of 2021, we delivered 100,674 boxes of food to families in the North Marion County area. Uh, and we also packed a majority of those boxes as well. So we had uh, Tuesday box packing time and uh, Wednesday delivery. At the end of that, I mentioned the boxes, but it equated out to, we figured every box is on average about 24 pounds. We estimate that we've delivered 50.3 tons of food out into the community. Uh, while all of this was going on, uh, as everybody is more than well aware, the Beach Creek Fire was going on, so we also had our volunteers uh, respond up to Detroit for the water distribution. Uh, we went to the fairgrounds for the evacuation center and worked there. Uh, I did that as well. And we also had some volunteers working in the emergency operations center. Uh, as far as what I would love to see and, and thank you for, but there's, if, if you don't have enough on your plate, I've got one more thing I'd like to add. <laughs> and uh, that would be kind of starting a program or making uh, emergency preparedness, uh, preparedness education in the public more out there where people, instead of having to hunt for it, they can find it, it hits them in the face. Um, so I would love to see something uh, along those lines. Thank you. I think that's agreed upon just because we saw the reaction of citizens through COVID, ice storms, and that wildfire. And I, you're not wrong. People need to be uh, trained and informed on how to engage in the event of emergency. I think um, we have a good team, but it's a small team. And I know that we're working with some consultants and Oregon Emergency Management on how we can grow opportunity and access. Um, Kathleen Silva, who I'm sure you're familiar with, and her team are doing all sorts of things on the internet to try to help folks um, be independently prepared. I went out and showed them uh, how to do, how to fill a sandbag in the event of a flood. That was fun. Um, and there's other things that are going on. Uh, I appreciate everything that you do. I actually interacted with you multiple times. You may not have known in all those situations, specifically those food boxes. And your team was uh, at, at most professional. Um, every interaction that I had and I, I just really appreciate what you do. It takes a lot of time and consideration to stand forward to be a volunteer anyway and then to do it in a time of crisis where people's emotions run high. And uh, there's CERT programs all over the state. We have a few here in Marion County, but the North team, you guys are very, um, I would say, paramilitary. And, uh, oh, wait, okay. I, I don't make anybody salute me. I just say no, There's a point to that is that you're orderly and you execute with uh, great um, detail and efficiency. And I think people can learn from you. So thank you for what you do and for how organized you are because there's, there's always room to grow. And there's nothing wrong with being paramilitary. I used to work for the fire service, so it's okay. It all depends on the context in which that word is used. Well, I wasn't yeah. meaning a negative. <laughs> there's, there's no weapons allowed in CERT, just to clarify for the public. Um, well, thank you, Rob. And Rob came from Woodburn, so we really appreciate him joining us today. And then I also just want to touch really quickly on the dog shelter, which is one of our programs that relies heavily on volunteers and if you follow the shelter on Facebook or social media then you know that for the last six months they have been operating at or nearly at capacity and the shelter staff described volunteers as the backbone of the operations and just recognizing that those volunteers can literally save a dog's life through their volunteer work volunteers at the shelter. They help with the day-to-day -day physical care of the dogs, and they also provide really what can be really critical, which is socialization for the dogs. Um, it helps them on their um, building confidence and behavioral issues, and it greatly decreases in uh, what they term um, 
kennel stress, um, which is a significant factor to how well a dog will do under our care. So those volunteers, they do all kinds of things at the shelter, as you can see by the slide. You know, they play, they train, um, they help with cleaning, they help with food prep, they go to events, and they help others with the adoption process. And they also foster. So we have a group of um, folks here that take and provide care for to dogs 24-7. And all of this work really greatly impacts whether a dog will have a successful adoption. And that is always the goal of the dog shelter. In all, there were 162 volunteers that helped with the dogs in 2021 at the shelter. And uh, they helped care for over 1,000 stray uh, neglected or um, uh, injured dogs in 2021. And then the last little program I want to highlight really quickly are uh, some of the programs with the Sheriff's Office. So search and rescue volunteers use their skills and equipment to assist in searches for lost, missing, or deceased individuals. And they're primarily doing that work uh, in urban, rural, or uh, wilderness areas. These volunteers are actually certified through the Sheriff's uh, Search and Rescue Academy. And then on top of that, they make a commitment to do about 30 hours of training, additional training each year. And that training builds their core competencies in areas such as maps and compass use, treating hypothermia, heat stroke, uh, crime scene procedures, search procedures and patterns, tracking techniques, radio communications, uh, just to name a few. The other program uh, at the Sheriff's Office is the Cadet Unit. So the Cadet Unit is made up of individuals who are 14 and a half to 21. And uh, those individuals, so in addition to having to do a written test, an interview, and go through a very, very thorough background check, those volunteers also complete the Cadet Academy and then commit to at least 20 hours of service uh, each month going forward. In 2021, the cadets, cadets helped with security and traffic control at 20 events in Marion County. Uh, normally, I think they sometimes can hit up to as many as 50 events, and that is a program that's just start of, start, sort of starting to really get back after COVID. But those uh, individual volunteers did help at the county fair. They helped at Bauman's Harvest Festival, the Covered Bridge Community Thanksgiving Dinner, Shop with the Cop, Christmas of Hope, and National Night Out as are just a few of the events that they helped at. And then also in the Sheriff's Office, they also engage um, and partner with interns. They have administrative and special event volunteers. And there are about 80 volunteers that uh, provide support to adults in custody at the jail. So in all, I think the Sheriff's Office had about 199 volunteers in 2021. And so that's just a, a recap of um, programs at the county because, uh, yeah, we talked about the fair, emergency management, the dog shelter, and the Sheriff's Office. But additionally, we have volunteers with uh, victim assistance. Andrew is an intern, but there's also a place in that program for victim advocates and sexual assault response volunteers. We have volunteers with the law library, and we have a lot of volunteers with our environmental services program at Public Works. Uh, I wanted to touch quickly this slide. We have a lot of volunteer opportunities that are ongoing. And so I just thought I'd do a quick little share of a couple needs that we either currently have or we know that are coming. And so I talked earlier a little bit about the dog shelter. The dog shelter is currently looking for volunteers and that is an ongoing opportunity. And then the other one I want to highlight is that we will soon be recruiting for this year's county fair. 
And so folks can uh, visit our website, the county's website, and uh, find updated information on opportunities as they arise. And then the other thing I wanted to do is just to clarify a little bit and share a little about some of the 2022-23 training opportunities that are coming up. Many of our volunteers, uh, so while we accept applications year round, they are required to go through some significant training before they actively volunteer. And so I've highlighted those today. Uh, search and rescue with the sheriff's office. So they have to have applications by mid-November and then they begin their training usually in December. The cadet unit, that academy usually runs in January and they are planning to have a January 2023 cadet academy. And then victim assistance, they offer trainings generally three times a year. So they do an annual training for the sexual assault response advocate, and that um, happens in July. And then a victim advocate goes, has training available two times a year, which is going to be in March and September. And that is uh, the bulk of what I was gonna talk about. I just, in closing, wanna thank volunteers. I wanna thank um, the other staff and county leadership who uh, make this work possible. I feel pretty fortunate that this is my job and I am always humbled uh, when I look at the experience, the expertise and the commitment and the energy that our volunteers bring to the table. Uh, my sincere thank you to Andrew, to Ray, and to Rob for joining today. And I think, uh, so the next item on the your agenda is the proclamation, proclaiming uh, this as National Volunteer Week in uh, Marion County. But before we move on, I just want to make sure if you have any questions for me or anything else for our guests. Well, it's pretty comprehensive. That's a lot. It's, there's a lot going on here at the county. Commissioner? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Sherry, thank you. And thank you to all the volunteers and all this represents. And I, I just uh, was thinking of the three T's, the time, talents, and treasure that we all have, right? And uh, some have more of, of others than of uh, those three T's. And uh, some things that are probably left off this list that you know, it's hard to include everything, but we're going to have our Marion County reentry breakfast next Thursday morning at the Kaiser um, Civic Center, and there's going to be probably close to 300, 350 people attending that, and they donate to a client fund that helps our parole and probation uh, team on reentry and lead. We're, we're expanding that to our lead clients, etc. And so there's a there's also the time and the and the talent and then people that are just writing checks sometimes that don't show up on this report um, in Marion County. And so it's, it's an expanded universe that we can't, we can't possibly include everybody, but thank you for your presentation today. Oh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to come in and talk about volunteers. And, and yeah. I mean, they really make a tremendous impact on the counties. Uh, they help us leverage resources and programs so that we really can deliver the best, the most services possible in the counties. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so next, so just stay where you are. Yep. <laughs> We're gonna move on to the next item, which is proclamations on our agenda. And under human service, human resources, and under an action item, we're going to consider approval. Excuse me, approval of a proclamation designating the week of April 17th through the 23rd, 2022, as Volunteer Week in Marion County. You want me to do that? Yes, Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve a proclamate a proclamation designating the week of April 17th through the 23rd, 2022, as Volunteer Week in Marion County. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Commissioner Cameron, would you please begin the proclamation? Sure. In a matter of proclaiming April 17th through the 23rd, 2022 as Volunteer Week in Marion County, 
proclamation. This matter be came before the Marion County Board of Commissioners at its regularly scheduled meeting on October 20th, 2022. Whereas the entire community can inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take actions that change the county. And whereas during this week, all over the nation, service projects will be performed and volunteers recognized for their commitment to service. And whereas volunteers in Marion County have undertaken responsibilities that promote the general welfare of the county. And whereas in providing these services, volunteers have demonstrated a spirit of personal concern and wholehearted willingness to help others. Whereas individuals and communities are at the center of social change, discovering their power to make a difference. And whereas experience teaches us that government by itself cannot solve all of our social problems. And whereas our county's volunteer force of citizens is a great treasure. And whereas these volunteers ask nothing more than the satisfaction of a job well done. And whereas these individuals are most deserving of appreciation and thanks. Now, therefore, we, the Marion County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 17th through the 23rd, 2022 is Volunteer Week in Marion County and urge our fellow citizens to volunteer in their respective communities. Signed this 20th day of April, 2022. And if you three, four would join us in the front, we're gonna take a picture with the proclamation. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, they came. Like, I'm take a picture. Do you want me to take the picture, or do you? No, don't. We have a person. Sure. He watches diligently in the front. Right now. See, join us up front. There. Just stand right next to me. One more right here. There you go. Just you know, excuse me. Turn sideways. move on to our second second proclamation of the day and Tom Kissinger and team it looks like might join us to consider approval of a proclamation recognizing April 22nd 2022 is Earth Day in Marion County and for those that are coming up be sure to introduce yourselves for the records I love these gifts no. I was hoping <laughs> each one of us got All one of these right. I got a hat Thank you. we come bearing gifts <laughs> This is what I need, though, is my compost. I saw this is going to be. Party. Huh? Now we're all going to be. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. Yeah. Yeah. Cherry balls and then you got to be back here. I got trash. That's all right. That's what great. Thank you. How long do they last? Dryer yeah. balls. This is the, the best. Bring in gifts. Okay. I will. I will. Thank you. Bring in gifts. Okay. I will. Thank you. So we should share with the world what we're getting. Yes, so and I will, I promise. You, okay, our, but I'm going to Vanna White it. We, got, we go. should have gotten these last night so I could have wore it today. Super great t-shirt. Yep. You think I'm extra large? What, what's, what we brought a variety of sizes. Choose a size. Yeah. You don't get to keep all three. Choose we bought one. a variety of sizes. Yeah, they were what, very diligent. What's I'll ball? take the XL. Okay. <laughs> it, do you know what a dryer sheet is, right? Yeah. This is the environmentally you know friendly version is? of that. Yes. <laughs> he has five daughters. He should fully I, I know what a dryer is. <laughs> I just have never had a dryer ball before. Yeah, and then wa I don't know what a washing bag is, though. So this is actually um, because a lot of clothing today is made out of synthetic material like polyester and that kind of thing. One okay. of the big environmental issues is uh, microplastics. Oh. And when you wash those materials, uh, it actually puts microplastics into the water. Um, so things like uh, like Patagonia jackets and those kind of things, you put okay. them inside those, and it will actually capture those micro microplastics oh, and prevent good. them from going into the water systems. Oh, very good. Interesting. Yeah. Who knew all the things that they put in your life to make you die? <laughs> <laughs> Patagonia jackets. Note to self. Note Thanks. to self. <laughs> Note to self, you should buy the Columbia ones anyway, because hey, Patagonia is not an Oregon. Not an right. Oregon-based company. Is, so you know, that was your first mistake. <laughs> I don't. I don't have either. Sorry. 
Okay, Tom. All right. Um, so for the record, Tom Kissinger, uh, Waste Reduction and Parks Program Supervisor. Uh, just want to really briefly introduce the team that worked on this. Um, so we have Stephanie Rosentrader, um, who helped manage the ArcGIS hub process and the website. Uh, we have Dakota Tangretti, who's one of our waste reduction coordinators, um, who is managing a lot of the volunteer side of things. Uh, we have Yancey Gordon, our communications coordinator, who's doing a lot of the social media. Um, and the team worked together to design all these graphics in-house, um, including all of the things that you see on social media. And then Rachel Van Wert, who is our Earthwise um, coordinator, and she brought together a lot of our Earthwise businesses to get a lot of these donations and for the prizes. Um, so just real brief presentation today, just wanted to give an update on what we've been doing for Earth Day. Um, so each year, Environmental Services promotes Earth Day as a way to engage our community in waste reduction, water quality, and natural resources topics. Um, this year, to re-engage with the community after a two-year pause, last year we did more of an online event um, doing through social media, and this is our kind of rebirth of the, the big event. We decided to do something a little bit different and prepared a unique public outreach campaign um, to align with this year's Earth Day celebration. And using ArcGIS, uh, this team, along with our partners in the GIS team and IT, uh, developed a public web page with uh, tips and tricks and resources to reduce waste. Um, we also designed a series of activities uh, for the community using a survey, and we'll go to that, and that is called the Passport to Sustainability. And there are 20 activities. Uh, and the more activities you complete, the greater the prizes that you win. Um, some of those prizes were demonstrated here today for you. Uh, and you can track your progress through our new results page. Now that we have some results, we can show you what that looks like. Um, we have a, a nice map that shows where people are com completing activities, what activities are being completed. And then you can track your pro progress using your unique username. Um, so we've got a lot of participation through this, which is really great. And then this all culminates in a community event at Spong's Landing on Friday, April 22nd, from 4 to 8 p.m. Uh, there'll be guided nature walks. There's a terrarium building uh, exhibit. There's an educational scavenger hunt with our partners who are going to be tabling. Uh, that also includes prizes. There'll be live music from the Woodburn Mariachi Band, Woodburn High School Mariachi Band, and ice cream sundaes provided by On Any Sunday, and the first 200 are free, and they come with a little Eco Jade reusable container so that in the future you can get your ice cream in a sustainable Sunday. <laughs> can you go back to the very last, where you were just before with the activities? Yep. And you're moving very quickly, but on the right-hand side, there was like a variety on the... Go down a little further. Oh, I think oh, the, the results page. Was. Oh yes, the results page. There's something about a ditch. Uh, what is ditch disposables? So ditch disposables is, I don't have mine up here, but it's the uh, reusable bottles, reusable um, containers. Oh, like you're like getting rid of them. Yep, getting Not rid like of them. Ditch. No, Not like a public. ditch. I'm like, what are we doing in ditches? <laughs> <Private works. laughs> So ditch your disposable yes, cups use and these. utilize your reusable water bottle. <laughs> Got and it. You are okay. all very good about doing that on camera too, so I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> and then additionally, staff have prepared a board proclamation recognizing April 22nd as Earth Day in Marion County. I just want to note that we're good off camera too. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying you're not. I just appreciate it on camera because it promotes it. My, my black hydro flask since 2015. Yeah. It's like I need a new lid for it though. It's Oh yeah, kind of getting ugly. Getting yeah. used. But this, this cup is from. Um, oh, I want to say this is from like 1998. You think I'm getting some disease out of it? I'm drinking in plastic. Uh, <laughs> I would maybe recommend moving to something a little more durable. Yeah. <laughs> and we're normal people. Yeah. Whatever normal means. I'm not getting rid of it. Super relative. Nope. Super relative. <laughs> More things to help me die. Is that what you said? No, no. Yes, no. earlier. Yes, earlier. Not right now. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, staff does recommend <laughs> approval of the proclamation, and we would love to see all of you out there on Friday um, with the community. We're getting a lot of interest, and it looks like the weather is going to be good for the, the afternoon, and we're very excited to put this on. I'm excited. I, I, when you put that up, I thought, didn't we already see this? But it was an abandonment update, I think, that we Correct. saw this last week, right? Yep. Yeah, I don't know what I said back then, but I 
really enjoy the logos and, you know, kind of capturing all the elements of the environment. And as it came up again, I was thinking about uh, Wonder Woman and how they talk about all the elements and the things that they can do there. So yep. no, be a planet. superhero. Captain Planet. <laughs> planet. Everyone knows it's Captain Planet. Just be a superhero and do good things by exactly. the Earth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cartoons. We've I had to Google Captain lately. Planet the other day. <laughs> Yeah. Way, way, way ahead of me. <laughs> okay. Any, anything you'd like to ask I, or add? I just really like this team. They make this super fun. Thank you. <laughs> and I appreciate shot. that that hat is not green because this looks much better Does on it? you than the yeah. other green one. I appreciate you like checking out, making, making sure so, I'm, yeah. I'm not embarrassing in front of your friends. I am. Well, yeah. I know her. Madam Chair, uh, I don't know if Dakota could come up and talk about master recyclers totally. and where we're at with that. Um, it's because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, the in-person stuff stopped. I, I did that class back in 2005, no, 2015, I think. Where are you with that? I know you revamped it. Can you just share briefly with us? Of so course. Real we quick. can move that to you. Thank you. I just want to point out before Dakota gives his presentation that one of our activities for the passport is signing up for the new class. So. Well, that's what, I knew that, so that's, yeah. no, I'm teasing. <laughs> Well, yeah, I appreciate you asking because... So introduce yourself. For yes, sorry. Uh, Dakota you. Tangretti, uh, Marion County Environmental Services and Public Works. Um, so I appreciate the question because this is really a legacy program that, yeah, for over 27 years, it's been present in the community. And for folks that are not familiar, the Master Recycler Program is a multi-week training in which folks learn about our sort of integrated solid waste management system, the so things like waste reduction, sustainable themes, uh, reuse and repair over just recycling, right? And so this revamp has been sort of an idea to shake it up. Um, as it's been this legacy program. So we've enlisted the help of um, another team, JPW, that's currently, we're still in the process um, of really you know, looking with a new direction and logo. Um, and so in October, we did a smaller beta course to test some new curriculum that I've developed and with the team. And then um, we have a larger beta. When I say beta, we're testing things. We're sort of getting people's opinions on previous versus current material. And during this larger beta course, which is starting actually next week, um, on April 28th, it's a, they're on Thursday evening, so seven <laughs> consecutive Thursdays for this round. Um, we're going to have a group of about 25 folks that filled up really quickly of previously interested um, folks we had in the program, um, because a lot of times people would be on a waiting list. It was how popular it was. It would say, hey, we're going to contact you when the next class comes around, right? And so um, during that course, we're excited to offer sort of A-B testing, where we have two of the directions, the, the logos and directions and sort of positioning statements or the mission of these programs that will be presented to them. And then we'll do some larger community survey testing to see where we go with the new name, new logo, new direction. But same uh, really strong spirit and sense of volunteering and empowerment for folks to do those projects in the community. So that's where we are there. Um, it's taken a little bit longer with COVID, but we think that we want to definitely do it right and really sit with a lot of work and detail and um, thought put into it. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I just, one of the things that just brought my awareness up when I took that class was we always talk about recycling. It's the third option. Mm -hmm. Reducing and reusing are the first two and you know talking about getting rid of the the plastic water bottles and all that stuff and um, You know, I've said this before I have a I have a spice rack that I refill and just go to um, I'm not gonna say what store where they sell bulk spices and just continue <laughs> to re refill my yeah Stuff and and that was the thing that helped me the most in my own personal stuff was to say how can I? Um, reduce what I'm already using and um, and reuse some of the things that we already do. So thank you, appreciate. Looking, looking forward to seeing if we can get another 150 people in the next couple of years trained. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I appreciate the advocacy because that's really important that we model, we do all this great stuff with having durables, we talk about it a lot and I really appreciate that. And a big movement too is obviously also getting out into other communities. So the big difference with this course is offering it a few times a year like before, but in different communities. Salem yeah. having a Woodburn rotation and then a Canyon rotation as well. They're really getting it to folks that have never seen it before. And so I appreciate that advocacy and as we really try to reach on um, those underserved communities that we haven't gotten to before. And the key is Dakota makes it all fun. Um. So that's why it's going to be successful. Yep. It's because doing good should be fun. And if it's not, then we're doing it. <laughs> and I just appreciate that you guys make it fun. Well said. We would love to see you in a class sometime. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Okay. He's talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to all of you. Deal. Yeah. Uh -huh. We would love to see everyone in a class. Awesome. If it's. Okay. We can do one you, just you for you. That's you very can have to talk to my wife about Thursday. I know. Like, can my you do it at lunchtime? But, uh, we potentially can just for That you. would be a really ideal situation for me. Yeah. I will bring my lunch and come to all your classes. <laughs>
but I really try to hang out with my kids in the evening. I totally understand. <laughs> we can make something work just for you. I mean, I'll bring them too, I suppose. But <laughs> oh, yeah. okay, perfect. My one and a half year old would love it. Yeah, she would. She's inter very it. entertaining She'd too. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> okay. Would you please uh, make question. the motion? I would. Madam Chair, I move that we approve a proclamation recognizing April twenty second, twenty twenty two, as Earth Day in Marion County. I'll second the motion. Thank you. <laughs> I was thinking of reducing. I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. My motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Would you please begin the proclamation? Sure. I will. The matter proclaiming April 22nd, 2022, as Earth Day in Marion County, a proclamation. This matter came before the Marion County Board of Commissioners as regularly scheduled public meeting of April 20th. 2022 to proclaim April. <laughs> hmm. Is today no nope. birthday? Okay. To proclaim April 22nd, 2022, as Earth Day in Marion County. Whereas Earth Day was first celebrated on April 22nd, 1970, with the goal of inspiring an appreciation of our nation's natural resources through conservation and protection, and whereas the celebration of this day marks an annual review of and commitment to the principles of the first Earth Day, and Whereas Earth Day marks a, a renewed commitment to environmental stewardship and to the implementation of sustainability efforts, now therefore it is hereby proclaimed that April 22nd, 2022 is Earth Day in Marion County, dated at Salem, Oregon, this 20th day of April, 2022. There's lots of twos in there. Yeah, yeah. There are a lot of twos, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it only hung him up, and I appreciate that he went first. So would you all please come forward and take a photo with us? Absolutely. I mean, I can wear my hat. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna down my shirt. But I'll put the hat. There we go. Thanks, team. Thank you. See you Friday. Yes. Good job. All right, now let's move on to the consent calendar. Commissioner Cameron, would you please present that? Yeah, Madam Chair, I'll move the consent calendar this morning. First item under finance, approve a quick claim deed for the sa uh, sale of tax foreclosed property, tax ID number 543280 and 543281, back to David L. Roop, uh, legal heir of the prior owner of record. Under juvenile, ratify an approval of a licensing renewal application submitted to the Oregon Department of Human Services, DHS, Children's Care Licensing Program for the Guaranteed Attendance Program, referred to as GAP. I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. And now we'll move on to our action items. Today, under Board of Commissioners, we have Board Committee appointments under Solid Waste Management Advisory Council to consider orders reappointing Bonnie Sullivan as a business industry member and Kevin Hines as a solid waste representative to the Marion County Solid Waste Management Advisory Council with Ms. Sullivan's term beginning July 31st, 2022 and ending July 31st, 2026 and Mr. Hines term beginning June 25th, 2022 and ending June 25th, 2026. Mr. Brian May. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Uh, for the record, Brian May, Environmental Services Division Manager. As mentioned, we're here to seek reappointment of Bonnie Sullivan and Kevin Hines. Uh, Kevin Hines was not able to attend today, but Bonnie is here. Before I let her introduce herself, do a little back, you know, a pitch for our SWAMAC, our Solid Waste Advisory Committee uh, Council. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I look at Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie has become not only our historian for those things related to solid waste in Marion County, but she's also uh, what I refer to as our taskmaster. She keeps us on agenda and everything else for uh, the last 16 years. So uh, I quickly correct myself uh, to make sure I'm doing things appropriately. So 
I'll go for it. That's here. fair. I appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, Swamix is formed in February of '89, um, and this is a, a public body that makes recommendations of, of to staff and also to the board on those things related to solid waste and recycling. Uh, it consists of 16 members, eight citizen members, and then eight industry members. Um, each now serve a four-year term. As mentioned, Bonnie has finished her fourth term and Kevin has finished his first term. Um, our meetings are the fourth Tuesday of each month at 5.30 and we do those out at uh, Public Works at 5155 Silverson Road Northeast. Um, but I'll, I'll quit talking and let Bonnie have a chance to talk about all the great stuff she does. Good morning, commissioners. It is an honor to be here, and my name is Bonnie Sullivan, and I do represent the construction and housing industry um, on the council. I first became involved with Marion County Solid Waste Advisory Council back in, I believe it was 93 or 94. And the reason for that is because they were proposing to put a landfill across the freeway from me. And I then became a member of a group that I helped create, which was called CREDO, which stands for Citizens for Responsible Environmental Disp Disposal Options. And they formed in 2000, or no, 1998 is when they formed. And my first involvement with being appointed to the SWAMAC Advisory Council was in 2006. And I have been extremely proud to say that I am a citizen in Marion County. Mm -hmm. Marion County has even been nationally recognized a number of different times. Um, I completed the 150 miles for the 150 years, and that was in 2009. And um, I've also completed the master recycling program, which was when Bailey Payne was still the instructor for that. And I thought I knew a lot about recycling because I do things at my home because we didn't have a disposal service at our area until many years later. And now I still go and take my stuff to the transfer station that I don't recycle at home, like my composting and, and um, other items. And I even have got my husband to enjoy going to the transfer station. So um, <laughs> then in 2013, I had the honor to be voted as a volunteer outstanding advisory board member. And so I treasure that award. And I still, to this day, even though we lost Sam, I still remember that day when he gave me the plaque. Mm. So. He's not lost. He's no. our treasure. He's our treasurer now. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> he still has a thought process to share on environmental <laughs> services. He's the trash guy. He'll yes. always have a say. Yes. <laughs> Well, thank you, Bonnie, for being here. So you've been a volunteer in this particular role for over 20 years. Is that right? Almost. Almost. You, you say it like you're shy. I think that's pretty fantastic. Uh, do you more, know more than Brian? Mm. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, he <laughs> says, yeah. Some of the historian thinks in, thanks, Brian, for bringing that up. <laughs> I've next named myself the historian. And... Um, Right now, I know that our bylaws are in you guys' preview, and I hope to get them done soon so that after we diligently have to work on trying to fill a bunch of bank vacancies on SWAMAC, that we will be able to have a training session again. Um, the pandemic has really done a lot to different councils and boards, and I understand that. But I'm a people person, and I would love to see us get back to being in person instead of on Zoom. I'm the only, well, I'll take that back. There's been a couple other members that have gone out to public works, but I cannot get Zoom at my home, and so I 
make a big effort to make it to the meetings. And um, being the chair has taken on many different roles for me in that I feel um, planning agendas and now we've broken down into different groups to address different issues and I'm really thrilled that we are really diligently working on that. So. You're still meeting on Zoom? Uh, we're doing kind of a cohort so that we do in-person and Zoom. Yep. Are you moving back to in-person fully here soon? Um, we are. We're trying to get everybody to want to come back. Um, the flexibility it's allowed because we do have people that aren't in the vicinity. Um, mm -hmm. So we're looking at possibly even relocating. We used to uh, have our meetings here yeah. or downtown that's a little more centrally located. So we're yeah. looking at exploring those options. That's great. Well, I don't know where your bylaws are in the process, but I'm sure staff are handling it. We'll see them very soon. Yes. So <laughs> we're, we're doing a legal review, and then we'll have them to you. So. Great. Would you like to add anything or ask any questions before we move on to a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, Bonnie, thank you for your, your history and your knowledge and your input over the years. And we, the three of us just recently took a tour with um, Brian. I don't know if I can talk about this stuff publicly. I guess it's public, sure. right? I mean, it was a public <laughs> it tour. It was a public tour. <laughs> <laughs> we were on it. Um, and uh, you mentioned Marion County being recognized uh, nationally um, for our programs. And uh, and you mentioned Sam, and he would always say, you know, we're probably, we have the best system in Oregon and probably one of the best in the United States. And uh, the, however, on that tour, we realized as we were standing on top of the Mount Trash. Uh, Mount Trash in Benton County that uh, we still have a long ways to go. Um, and the, the, the system that we saw down in Toledo that actually takes uh, some of the commercial waste and then pulls a lot more out of it, they were getting a 51%, I think they were saying. Landfill diversion, yeah. The recovery yeah. right now is about 20% with targets closer to 50%. Yeah, um, that that it really would help us get to some place. So we're we're mm -hmm. we're on top of trying to be innovative, and the new MRF is going to help with the um, the the haulers that have the new MRF up there. And so there's a lot of good things happening, but we still have our challenge. This is a really challenging area, and most people just take it for granted. You know, they think about recycling, but they just hey, somebody's going to pick this up at the curbside, and um, when you stand on top of that mountain. You think, well, we got a lot of work to do. It's it's amazing what's getting piled in there. Um, so, thank you for your service and uh, for the taking on the challenges that we have continually ahead of us. On on your note of tours, that's what um, is the master recyclers being uh, reformed and everything. That is one thing that I have really stressed that we definitely have tours because I feel like you were just saying, until you actually see what's going on in the county, you don't have any knowledge. And I yeah. feel that on hands-on, seeing something may make a big difference. Yeah, just may. I mean, just taking, just going, you mentioned the transfer, the transfer station. If you just went from the transfer station where people are dumping stuff, and follow that dump mm -hmm. to where it goes and what happens to it after that, uh, all the way to what's get what's get pulled out, reused or recycled, and then what gets dumped down in Benton County. Um, you go, whoa, we we have some big challenges to get to where we want to get. And you know, I talk to people, and the, there's people that I, I be careful how they say this, but there's people that say, well, we just need to be zero waste. Well, you know, and they say, well, San Francisco is zero waste. Well, it's not. No. They're, still, they're still taking stuff to a landfill uh, or um, using um, waste energy facilities or something. Uh, but we, we've got some work to do, and we can, we can do better. So thank you for your service there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Lowe, would you please make the motion? I would. All right. Madam Chair, I move. Uh, that we approve two orders, uh, reappointing Bonnie Sullivan as business industry member and Kevin Hines as solid waste representative to the Marion County Solid Waste Management Advisory Council. With Ms. Sullivan's term beginning July 31st, 2022, ending July 31st, 2026, and Mr. Hines' term beginning June 25th, 2022, and ending June 25th, 2026. I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you, you Bonnie. It's a pleasure meeting you in person. Yes. I met you at the state. The state of the county. county. State of the county. That's right. I remember you told me about a prize, a gift. I remember. She visited with me longer, though. That's, that's, that's fair. Um, <laughs> which, was, anyway. which was very special. <laughs> thank you for Thank coming. you for your service, Bonnie. And now we'll move on under business services to consider approval of an order re adopt excuse me an order adopting revised Marion County Administrative Policy number 518 and procedure number 518A drug and alcohol free workplace and Justine Ford is going to join us Good morning Good morning I'm Justine Flora risk manager for Marion County through business services and um, as you mentioned, I'm asking approval of our uh, updates to uh, policy 518, the drug and alcohol free workplace, both the policy and the procedure 518A. Um, the purpose of this policy is to establish guidelines for creating and maintaining a drug and alcohol free workplace place that encourages a safe, safe, healthy and productive work environment and promotes efficient and safe public services. This a pol policy and procedure were initially adopted back in 2000 or back in yeah 2003, and revised in September of 2018 last. And we're asking again to for you to approve our latest revisions. Um, most of the revisions at this time around are simply a matter of updating the format. Uh, updating some um, grammatical issues and the web links and contact information that is to, that is in the policy to make sure that the uh, policy and the procedure both reflect the, the current contacts, web locations, other documents, and that sort of thing. Um, there were a few minor um, updates to the policy procedure, um, mostly housekeeping items. Okay. Any questions? Now we saw this at the uh, management update, I believe, yep, last week. Weeks. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Great. Good. Madam Chair, Cameron. if you're ready, yep. Madam Chair, I'll move that we approve an order adopting revised Marion County Administrative Policy number 518 and procedure number 518A, drug and alcohol free workplace. And I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thanks. Thank you very Thank you. much. Have a good day. You too. And now we'll move on to hear from Scott Wilson, Scott Wilson under Public Works to consider approval of an amendment number two to the contract for services with CDR McGuire Inc. to add $90,000 for a new contract total of $402,500 for winter storm 2021 tree and debris removal monitoring and oversight services through September 30th, 2022. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners, Madam Chair. For the record, my name is Scott Wilson. I'm the Road Operations Division Manager for Public Works. I'm here today to uh, seek um, um, your approval for Amendment 2 to contract PW-4400-21 with CDR McGuire Incorporated for the Winter Storm 2021 Debris Removal Monitoring. Uh, back in 2000, uh, February 2021, Marion County experienced a winter storm that resulted in heavy damage to county trees. The tree damage resulted in tree dam or trees and woody debris threading and falling into the right of way, county parks, and other county properties. In addition, there were numerous trees that needed to be altogether removed or have hazard limbs removed as a result of the storm's impact and their health. Acknowledging these needs, Marion County Public Works strongly solicited bids from tree service companies to provide hazardous hangar removal, hazardous tree removal, hazardous tree stump removal, and also woody debris cleanup. The Board of Commissioners uh, back then approved the contract with T TFR Enterprises on October 27, 2021, and on the same date, the Commissioners also approved a contract with CDR McGuire Incorporated to approve the monitoring and oversight of these services for the tree and debris removal for damages incurred during this winter storm. Work to remove the remaining hazard trees and hangars began on November 8, 2021. CDR and McGuire and TFR Enterprises were working in tandem seven days a week to expeditiously complete work. However, as work progressed, C.D. McGuire, TFR Enterprises, and Public Works Operations staff had identified a significant number of additional hazard trees, hazard tree hangers, and the trees that needed to be removed. In order to continue with um, 
current productivity and avoid project completion delays, Public Works submitted Amendment 1 to increase the contract with CDR McGuire from $250,000 to 312500 Our current request is to amend the contract with CDR McGuire Incorporated from $312,500 to $402,500 <coughs> based on the additional services for monitoring and the documentation of the revised quantities of hazard trees and tree hanger removal. As you can see on the slide, we, um, we show the uh, progress on the map of all the work that's been done. This gives us a good picture of, of all the progress here and where we are currently as of last week. Each point does um, feature, describes the point, the type of tasks that we're doing, uh, such as hazard tree limb cutting, debris haul locations, and, and so forth. As of last week, we have removed over 6,000, or we have, um, there have been over 6,000 cut tickets, 450 haul tickets created, and we have created a, over 23,700 cubic yards of debris, which is hauled, to, hauled over to our Browns Island disposal site to be recycled. Um, an example here of uh, some of the tickets that CDR McGuire is providing us um, that document all the detailed information of the types of work, the location that we do, uh, they are, and also supporting photos for each of the roughly 6,500 tickets that have been created so far. We're about 85% complete of the work uh, that's been identified, and our projections indicate that we should be completed in about four, four weeks. This contract is expected to cost $402,500. Federal reimbursement for this work under this contract is expected to be at a rate of 75%. Public Works staff recommends approval of Amendment 2 of contract PW-4400-21 with CDR McGuire Incorporated. And I'm here for any questions if you have any. Thank you, Scott. Do you have any questions? No, thanks for your work. This is ongoing. About done. We're about done. Yeah, <laughs> Madam, Madam Chair, thank yep. you, uh, Scott. So, a lot of work. Um, is some of this wood going to to our juvenile department? Uh, and when trees are coming down, do you know what's happening to the wood? Yeah, it's all it's all being transported down to uh, Browns Island disposal site for recycling. Um, we have to provide a final destination spot for for FEMA. The federal government needs to know exactly where the fu uh, final resting spot's going to be and how. It needs to be an EPA approved site, uh, which that, that does uh, fulfill uh, in order to meet all the requirements for reimbursement. So it's hard to distribute it amongst um, throughout the county without knowing where it's actually going to go. So, so the larger uh, pieces that are going to Browns Island, they're not, they're not, are they chipping all that? They're, they're being oh, chipped. wow. Okay. And then what? Then it's just, it, it'll compost. be all um, incorporated into compost. It'll be composted up into. So even though FEMA, you're complying with all the FEMA rules, I, I'm a bit shocked that FEMA doesn't have like a more environmentally friendly option for this, but um, you put it in one place, chip it, and then it just sits there to decompose. Is there an option with FEMA to ask them that like that's the final resting place, but then we turn those chips into park walks or? Oh yeah. We, we have, and it, it, the answer that we're getting is it just needs to show up at a, or end up at a final resting spot. From there, in which we've, we've fulfilled that, it, it, wherever we want to use that. It, okay. But right now, so I think So final resting spot doesn't mean that we can't use it as wood chips yeah. elsewhere. Because, I mean, final resting for a wood chip could be in a park, is what I'm Potentially, just yes. going with that. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Would you make a motion, please? Just kidding. Colin, what did you make motion, please? Uh, Madam Chair, I move that we approve amendment number two to the contract for services with CDR McGuire Incorporated to add $90,000 for new contract total of $402,500 for winter storm 2021 tree and debris removal monitoring and oversight services through September 30th, 2022. I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you, Scott, for your work on this. Appreciate the support. And now we're going to move on to the Sheriff's Office to consider approval of Amendment Number 2 to the Grant for Services Agreement with Liberty House to add $69,487.78 for a new contract total of $255,211.78 to provide assessment, treatment, and prevention services associated with their Hope and Wellness Program through June 30th, 2023. Commander Carvondi. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, for the record, Commander Kevin Carvondi, Sheriff's Office, Community Corrections Division, and 
Uh, just maybe start out at board, board session last week, I presented a similar uh, amendment request to the board approved opportunity to Center for Hope and Safety, so this may sound a little bit familiar. Uh, the funding source for this particular contract is through our Justice Reinvestment Grant Agreement. Uh, primary funding supports our county to meet the goals of justice reinvestment through uh, having a variety of prison reentry and prison diversion programs. 10% uh, of these grant funds are to be allocated to community-based nonprofit organizations that provide services to victims of crime. Uh, Liberty House is one of two victim service agencies uh, approved by the Public Safety Coordinating Council. Uh, back a few months ago in December of 2021, uh, we, were, uh, we received our final contract and, and budget from the Criminal Justice Commission confirming our, our final allocation. Uh, the funding, uh, ex it was inclusive of our, our formula grant as well as our supplemental grant, which was the competitive one, kind of the, the variable uh, of the funding. Uh, several contracts were identified needing amendments. This is one of them. This amendment brings us into alignment with our Justice Reinvestment uh, approved program budget. And a little bit about uh, the Liberty House. Uh, it's to, they do provide services associated with their Hope and Wellness Program. It's a nonprofit child abuse assessment center located in Salem that I know you're very well aware of. Uh, the mission of Liberty House is to provide excellence in the assessment, treatment, and prevention of child abuse, neglect, trauma, and grief to promote health and hope in children, families, and communities. Uh, these contract funds primarily support multiple therapists that provide triage assessment, individual, family, group, and crisis services for children and their families. And the original contract was for $185,724 from July 1, 2021 through June 30th of 2023. This contract amendment adds just over $69,000 to the original contract, bringing the total to $255,211.78. I'm available for any questions. Okay. Questions? Okay. No, I would be happy to, Madam Chair. I'll move that we approve uh, amendment number two to the grant for services agreement with Liberty House to add sixty-nine thousand four hundred eighty-seven dollars and seventy-eight pennies for a new contract total of two hundred fifty-five thousand two hundred eleven dollars and seventy-eight pennies to provide assessment, treatment, and prevention services associated with their Hope and Wellness Program through June thirtieth, twenty twenty-three. I'll second the motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Aye, the motion passes. Thank you. I'm just going to say on the record, I'm a little disappointed that Lieutenant Jefferson didn't join us. At yeah. The microphone. Yeah, come today, on. Is today, she learning? Is she going to come and present in the future? You, you know, that's my hope. We've got some work to uh, amendments and contracts coming up. And so, uh, Lieutenant Jefferson oversees the, our transition center as well as our our uh, work crews, and so um, this is kind of just throw a couple grounders her way. Plus, learn about it's like alphabetically, we're always last. <laughs> yeah. And so Sorry. it's it's like we uh, I always learn something new about all the good work that our county is doing. So she gets to learn as well. I'm super excited to see you in the future. We'll, have to we'll be very nice to you. I promise. Well, we will tee up questions. Wait, 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 can we ask questions now? Yeah. Over? Would you actually come to the microphone, so, please? Uh, just this want one. to. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I don't I'm just, know if people can see you. I know we're talking into the audience. Right now. As I drove up to the lake and down from the lake, um, forgetting my keys, by the way, uh, <laughs> this morning, um, I noticed that you know the 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 lake filled up more than it did last year already, and uh, the amount and our crew, our work crews, usually go up and perform a a sweep uh, up there. And I was I'm just curious. Where is that going? <laughs> Me too. I was I, like Lieutenant Jefferson, I, Detroit Lake. I, yeah, <laughs> see, she knows what's going on here. Is that is that on the schedule with Garrett with the work crew? Yes, yes, it is. You know when they're doing that? Do you, do they wait till it gets. I don't know exactly what date it is okay. happening, but it is happening, and so yeah. that's really exciting. I should do it right along with him. I, those guys get in the water, mm -hmm. you know? and yeah. it's cold. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to say anything to us? Do you want to introduce yourself for the record so oh, that we sure. know who we're talking to? Sure. My name is Anna Jefferson. I'm a lieutenant with the Marion County Sheriff's Office. And um, I'm actually excited that Commander Kavandi asked me to come today. And I just got to observe and learn what's going on in the county. And so I'm very happy to be here. Great. I think that we should have had your promotion in this room. <laughs> on a Wednesday. I was very excited to learn of your promotion, which I know it's been a little while back, but congratulations Thank on becoming you. a lieutenant. That's a big deal. Thank you so and much. And I just can't say enough about how valuable you are to the county. Yeah. And I hear about you from your peers all the time. So Thank you. thanks for what you do. 
course. Yeah. Appreciate it. And former clients. Um, where's the janitor? He is back at the office. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him I said hello. I will. <laughs> Thank you for indulging us and coming up here. Thank, Thank you, Commander, you. for the yeah, presentation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, have a good day. Okay. Um, Commissioner Cameron, would you read the calendar? Oh, my. I was just ready to shut everything down. Uh, here you go. I got one somewhere. <laughs> All right. We're done with this one. And later today at 11 o'clock, uh, work session on public works presentation in the commissioner's boardroom here on the fifth floor. Later today at 12 o'clock, a rails to trail tour in the Santa Am Canyon. That's going to be fun. Uh, Wednesday, later today, 5.30, Public Works volunteer reception. More volunteer uh, ex yeah, celebration at uh, the Silverton Road campus. Thursday, 9 a.m., work session, capital project update here in the commissioner's boardroom on the fifth floor. Thursday at 10 a.m., groundbreaking on Hope Plaza, location at 605 Center Street, Northeast. And Thursday, 10.30 a.m., local government day here, uh, the 22 Leadership Salem cohort in the, right in this room uh, on the first floor. Thursday, uh, I guess Thursday's the 21st, and at 1.15, executive session, uh, one 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 nine nine two dot six six zero two e commissioner's boardroom here on the fifth floor. Thursday uh, at one thirty. Oh, that's a one fifteen to one. That's going to be a short executive session, isn't it? Uh. <laughs> yeah. At Thursday at one thirty is a work session uh, with Public Works to update uh, Public Works facilities update and the commissioner's boardroom here on the fifth floor. Friday the 22nd, People, Planet, and Party at Spawn's <laughs> Landing Park, 6525 22nd Avenue North uh, Kaiser. That's a Kaiser address. Yeah. Must be outside the city limits, though. Yes. Way up there. Okay. And then uh, we're back on Monday at 1 p.m. Uh, Association of Oregon County's Quarterly Budget and Finance Committee meeting. That doesn't sound like fun. And uh, Tuesday at 9.30 a.m., management update in the commissioner's boardroom here on the fifth floor. Tuesday at 1.30, Marion County Housing Authority board meeting here in, on the fifth floor in the commissioner's boardroom. Tuesday at 26, 3.30, home youth community tour, 625 Union Street, Northeast Salem. Looking forward to that. Wednesday, 9 a.m., back here. Uh, Wednesday at 1.15, BOC policy analyst meeting here on the fifth floor in the commissioner's boardroom. Wednesday at 3 p.m., courthouse square evacuation training here uh, on the fifth floor in the commissioner's boardroom. And Wednesday at 6 p.m., North San Am Chamber of Commerce Awards Night at the San Am High School Auditorium, 300 Southwest Cedar Street in Mill City. Thank you. You're welcome. Before we close, do you want to give a shout out for your event for next week on the 28th? Well, I, I, yeah, and I mentioned it you earlier did. in the in the board session. Uh, yeah, uh, doors open at 7 a.m. Kaiser Civic Center, 7:30 to 8:30 is the program. Um, this is our first one in two year after two years of not being in person. Um, we're doing one this spring, and then we're going to do one, get back on cycle to do it in the fall. Uh, the keynote speaker would be um, uh, former Chief Justice, the Honorable Paul DeMunis. And we're going to have um, uh, client videos, three different clients, from one from Juvenile Program, one from the LEAD Program, and one from our reentry program to uh, demonstrate what good work the contributions that people make to this uh, program, how that helps those people um, become productive citizens after they, in some cases, they didn't even get into the system. In some cases, they got into the system. But, you know, it's all about redemption and um, trying to help people uh, turn and go the other way. And looking forward to it, we're probably sold, I want to say sold out in person. Um, but uh, it's going to be um, live streamed, Facebook live stream. This first time we've done that, so we'll see how many people really get attended. I'm, I'm excited about it, and I want to 
uh, thank everybody. Um, our community services department and Heather in community mm -hmm. services has done just huge work on helping keeping us on track and um, doing all the legwork to make this thing happen. So next Thursday, the 28th at the Kaiser Civic Center. Thank you. I don't know the address. You probably do. I, they can Google it. Yeah, they'll find it. It'll yeah. be great. It yeah. will be great. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. All right. Thank you.